It's always a surprise, even to myself, you know. I, I have the, these even stereotypes and biases of where I see a, a female on site, it's like, well, um, you know, that's not normal. And it should, it should become normal, really. When I started out in my first job, I was the only woman on the team. And now, where I work, where I work at the moment, it's quite, I think it's quite impressive. There's three women on, on our electrical engineering team, something I've never seen before. I've worked as an electrical engineer for 15 years, um, mainly in the office, but I've spent two years working in construction and commissioning, and, and about another year on and off, um, going into factories, going abroad to, to, you know, to look at the work that we've designed. I really enjoy seeing the end, end result of the projects that I work on. So for example, I worked on a few uh, oil and gas projects when I was um, in the UK and you know at times I'd be on an aeroplane flying across, across the, you know, the south of England and I'd see some of them projects that I'd worked on and it was really something that I enjoyed seeing. Know that you've kind of used your engineering knowledge and you've been part of that project that, that is going to be used to kind of help the community. As I went into the engineering world, and I started to go into schools as an ambassador talking about what I do as an engineer. I realized that there were lots of misconceptions that were held by children and the same misconceptions that I had about engineering. Um, and I decided to do something about that and started to write children's books with my brother. And the, the books were all about addressing those misconceptions and the stereotypes that exist around engineering. And it kind of snowballed on from there. It's important to target children because these misconceptions about what they can, can't, can and can't do start really early on. Um, you know, I have a four-year-old daughter and already she says things like, you know, that's not for girls or that's, that's just for boys. So it's important for them to understand that there, there are no limits there. I realised that there were problems at all levels when it comes to addressing the biases and the, and the, gender, the gender issues around um, kind of the STEM, STEM subjects. And I decided that because it was the children that I was speaking to, so I was going into, into primary schools mainly, that I'd do something at that level. And I thought that writing a children's book would be the ideal way to get, to get that message across. I guess when I was going into schools and talking about what I do, and realising how hard it was for, for children to understand what engineers really do, and also that someone who looks like me could be an engineer as well. And, I just thought it was such a shame that there's so many kids or, or people missing out on the career just because they don't know what it is. When I was going into the schools, I'd try and look, look for something that I could take along that would help me tell the story. And there was just nothing available at the time. So the, the first book was kind of a project really, and just a resource for myself to take out into the schools to use and help me kind of get that message across. Um, and then it worked well, the, the children liked it, the, the schools liked it and after that we continued to write other books. So after My Mummy's an Engineer we were kind of, we started to be contacted by people in different other, people in other areas of work and other professions and the second book that we wrote was My Mummy is a Plumber. We did My Mummy is a Scientist, My Mummy is a Soldier, my mummy's a firefighter and all of them times we've, it's been people who've contacted us to kind of say oh we've got that issue as well we'd love to have something that we can take into schools to explain what our profession is about um, and last year we also did our first daddy book which is my daddy is a nurse um, addressing the you know the stereotypes and misconceptions that that occur in in the nursing field as well when when, when people want to go into a role and there is that stigma around you know the gender then I'd say, first of all, speak to people in that field of work, especially people who are, I guess, the minority as well, and, and find out what their experiences are. And I guess just, just go for it, because actually when you're in, the, in that area of work, like as an engineer day to day, I don't notice that I'm sometimes the only woman in, in the room, um, as long as the team that you're working with are, are kind of in, inclusive and um, there's that good work environment then then it's it's always going to be great if you can do what you what your ambitions are and what you want to do now I've had a few encounters or experiences in my in my time as an engineer I mean I've turned up once to witness a factory acceptance test for some transformers and I was asked if you if I was there to take the minutes of the meeting 
uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, people are shocked, but you know, you, I, that, I guess that's how, how society, the media and everything portrays these kind of subjects. So um, that's why it's important to, make a, to try and make a change, I guess. Our next book, My Mummy is a Footballer, will be published on International Women's Day this year, which is the 8th of March. We were actually contacted by Lewis Football Club, which is the first football club in the world to pay their men and women equally. Um, so we've been working with them, working with a few football players with the content of the book and looking at the illustrations and that kind of thing. So we're really excited because it's, it's a bit of a change from our previous books. The books will be available on our website, which is uh, butterflybooks.co.uk and you'll also be able to get all of the other books there too.